Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about the Supreme Court of the United States, and we're going to talk about Washington State, and the Supreme Court deciding not to take up a case, and there's a whole bunch of people celebrating that as a win, and it is, in a way, but uh, we're also going to talk about why I agree with the dissents in part. I really think the Supreme Court should have taken up this case. Okay, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, the state of Washington has a ban on something called conversion therapy. You can probably assume, by the way, that I said that, um, that let's just say that it, has, it is widely viewed as discredited. The purpose of it is to change somebody's orientation or gender, and, and that's the whole goal behind it. It's not, the widely accepted view is that it's not real. It's scientifically discredited, okay? The state of Washington acting on this, going with best practices, they have a ban on this kind of therapy. Somebody took it to the Supreme Court trying to get that ban overturned. The Supreme Court decided not to hear the case. So the ban stands. And a whole lot of people are cheering. And I get it because it's a win. The thing is, lower courts are divided on this. In some places, a ban like that can't exist. I believe the Supreme Court should have taken it up because they can only decide one way. And that's in favor of the state. They can't decide any other way. In the media, this is being framed as a, quote, free speech case. No, it is not. Who told you that? The, the, the core of this case is whether or not the state has the ability to regulate conduct that occurs under a state-issued professional license. That ban, it applies to licensed therapists. That's the actual question. The court, the Supreme Court, has to rule in favor of the state. Otherwise, it undermines the entire state licensing system throughout the country. So I wish they had taken it up. To understand the impacts of this, let's do it this way. Let's say Meemaw, she has an ailment and she has a nurse that takes care of her and she trusts this nurse. And this nurse tells her one day, you know... That ailment you have, if you proved that you had faith, it would go away. There's a rattlesnake in the backyard. That's just speech. But it's under a professional license. That's why they don't have a choice in how they're going to rule on this. And then if they were to rule and say that that's okay, please understand that when grandma's faith is is less than adequate in a moment of doubt and that venom is stronger than her faith, you don't even get to sue. And that's not like a slippery slope argument. That's literally what's being argued is that that kind of speech would be permissible. So, yeah, it's a win in the sense that the ban gets to stay in effect. But it's also a loss because this could have been an opportunity for this to go nationwide. Even this court, as conservative as it is, they would have had to have ruled in favor of the state. Because no matter how people talk about it being a free speech case, at the end of the day, the real question being settled is whether or not the state has the ability to regulate conduct that occurs under a state-issued professional license. That's what would be decided. And the Supreme Court is not going to uh, disrupt that. They're not going to say that the state can't regulate the conduct under a state-issued professional license. If they did, there's no reason to have those licenses. They go away. Which... I am fairly certain that that is not something that the Supreme Court would want because it would very quickly 
apply to, I don't know, investment brokers, accountants, all kinds of things. And whatever they say, well, that's just free speech. It's a win, but it was an opportunity for for it to be an even bigger win. That's the reason the conservative justices chose not to take it up. Because there is no way they can decide that the state doesn't have that power. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.